I think the best the best thing to do is we'll probably just go ahead and show you guys. So yeah. So we have a uh, senior designer Nick Donaldson here. Everyone's he suited up. favorite Nick. He I suited know, up and ready to go. Around, I know you're <laughs> People like this Nick better than Whitey. He's our he's our favorite Nick. Sorry, Nick. He's, the, he's the best Nick. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. we'll, we'll just let Nick yeah. kind of take you guys for a little tour about kind of how this works. So as you can see, I'm in this you know digital world. Um, this is virtual reality. As you know it, if you've seen, if you've used motion controls before, you can see my controls here. Um, you can see a couple of our little functions that we have on the controller. Um, you can see everything's kind of one-to-one -one scale that I like and that I want to do. Um, and but what if I want to move? You know, what if I want to, to you know, edit the world and interact with it? So I can actually kind of grab the world and move it to where I want. You're moving the whole, the whole world, the yeah. whole, everything in the level editor. And it kind of feels like. Our world, or, you know, I'm standing in the same place, and the world is sliding around underneath me, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you know, um, I, I liked about that too. You were, you were mentioning earlier that kind of helps a lot of the simulation sickness with uh, yes. locomotion specifically, right? Yeah. Like it feels critical. I'm super sensitive natural. to this kind of thing, and um, we kind of went to great lengths to make it sh to make sure it didn't feel like you were sliding around the world willy nilly, and that you know it's actually the world that's moving, not you. Um, so you can see that the scale of these benches and chairs here are actually you know really small. Um, so one pretty cool thing that I can do is actually kind of pinch and zoom, just like an iPad. Mm -hmm. And now the world is this big. Now the world is that big. So, you know, this is, for me, it feels like I could sit on this bench here. <laughs> um, so we can kind of do the opposite as well. We can pinch and zoom this whole world down. Yep. And grab here. Yep. And we can just kind of keep going until we have what feels like a a tabletop game, you know, this between these two towers here is about two feet, you know, one arm's width. And so I can kind of slide the whole world around really easily. I can throw it along, catch it, <laughs> kind of rotate the whole thing, and then it's actually quite compelling and really uh, once you get the hang of it, really easy to start moving around the world and interacting yeah, it's, with it. It's, it's really cool. cool. Like you can actually. I, I feel like I can move around, I can navigate much faster using this type of interface than I ever could with a mouse keyboard and traditional CAD style, um, like Maya style controls. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it's really, really natural. And, and I think like it's important to mention too, as Nick's scaling the world and making himself as small as a mouse and as, as tall as Godzilla, yeah. the, sens the sensation you get in stereo mm -hmm. with the headset on, with immersion, is, is quite, like you, you, can't, you can't represent it on, My favorite. On, on the screen, but it's amazing. My favorite is to scale the world down like this. And then just kind of stomp through like Godzilla. Yeah, you can see my movement <laughs> through there feels, you know, it's, it's almost like uh, entertainment within itself, designing, right? Like, yeah. You know, yeah, there's yeah. so much you can do. So we can actually kind of open up the content browser here. And it's just the one that we that we know and love. Yeah, it's just the um, real editor UI. Yeah, that's a really crazy innovation here. You can actually bring up complex parts of the UI as if you're holding a little iPad in your hand. Um, yeah. And then you can manipulate the iPad with a laser pointer as if you, as if it's in the real world. Um, and using that paradigm, we can over time extend it to the entire editor user interface. Yeah. Like any part of it can now be exposed within VR in a minority report sort of way. That's our expectation: is we want the whole editor to be available in VR. Well, you might not want, you might not need every little dark corner of the editor day to day, but there's no reason why you shouldn't have access to it while you're in there. Uh, we want everything available to you. Like any good level designer, I steal as much things as many things as possible. <laughs> alt drag and just kind of place them in exactly. Alt drag. Our alt button in this case is this little modifier key at the top of the controller. So Nick, maybe you can explain the transform gizmo you're using. Yeah. So right now it's this behemoth of a multi transform, um, but it has the the reason we we did it this way for now is that it has uh, kind of everything that you would want in one place. You know, there's lock to one axis like this. Um, there is these uh, kind of scale. Drag scale. I would love to bring this back to our editor reel because <laughs> bounding box based scaling is awesome. It just makes it so easy to scale something like that. We can kind of drag this world around here. Um, little modifier key drag. Yeah. Let's duplicate. Do the same thing this way. Um, we have kind of corner based rotation. Um, we can actually turn, if you want precision or if you don't want precision, you can have mm. you can spin it around that way. You turn on rotate snap. We can. Um, I've memorized. So if you hold down on here, you can actually kind of use undo, delete, you a couple of really common things here. And if you just remember where they are, you can just kind of remember where they are and kind of, oops, repeat them. 
So that alignment and snapping functionality is key to building precise, you know, Absolutely. production quality environments uh, as opposed to just being a toy. You can create and align objects arbitrarily, uh, yeah. just as you can with the mouse. Yep. Yeah. If you tell a level designer they can't snap something, they're going to destroy you. So <laughs> it's a yeah. really important thing. <laughs> Yeah, it was critical to that you can do real work in here, right? So we focused on precision. There's a lot of snap, snapping assist. We tried to make snapping a little more fun. When we first implemented it, it would pop around quite a bit, just like any snap in any software. And we're like, ah, it doesn't feel right in VR, because things can kind of like vanish in front of you, and it just doesn't feel right when you're immersed. So yeah. we put nice transitions on everything. And you can see like he's Nick's using throwing gestures now and then. Uh, so just have snaps a little bit like this? Yeah. Yep. If I let go halfway, it'll loop, snap back a little bit. Yep. Can I actually see you? Can I see you inside that sphere? I think I can. You can see my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Just the hands. It's a little creepy. <clears throat> so we can do things. We can bring up the content browser again. Um, so this is one of the real advantages of um, being in virtual reality, is that we have the ability to actually really understand the scale. Let me turn snapping up here. Content browser off. Oh, oops. No. To bring myself back to a real lifelike scale. And I'll rotate the sucker around. You can actually grab it with two hands as well and do like a free transform. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting way to manipulate something, yeah. right? It feels it's probably the most natural movement yeah. feature we have. Well, and, and that's something you had mentioned to me earlier too, was like the the whole you already know how to do all this. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you get in and it's it's not like you have to learn you know, you have to kinda of know where the buttons are and where, where to find specific things, but you want to move that thing over there, you just grab it and you put it there. It's like moving a glass across a table. Right? It was, it was amazing. Think. Mark Rain came to the office yesterday. He hadn't tried this before. And it was, I'll give him credit. This is partially his idea originally back in like 2013. He really wanted us to try making a beer editor. Um, and he came in and he just picked it up and he just got it right away. He's like, oh, so this is how I move the world. Oh, this is how I scale myself. It's like an iPad. Yeah, even a marketing executive can make a level. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I wasn't expecting that, right? I mean, we are building this for level designers and, and, and serious development, but it, it actually improves approachability. Yeah, that's right. And that's what gives it kind of the magical feeling like the iPad. Your brain already know how, knows how this thing works because you've been doing it all of your life. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to unlearn or relearn things. It's like if, you know, if you're a level designer and you have specific ways about handling design or approaching a specific challenge, you can still apply all of that here, just the interface, the way that you interact with it, comes down to something that's more natural to you yep. than a flat screen with flat input, right? That you're kind of having to move around in. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's totally the opposite of CAD software, where yep. you have to learn a huge set of keyboard shortcuts and special mouse mm -hmm. movements, and try to map 2D mouse input into a 3D environment. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite aspects is when you bring it back to the real world scale, you make sure everything's kind of sitting right. Just look around the scene and walk see what feels it. good and what yeah. doesn't, you know? Yeah. Those benches feel like they're a little bit... And this is one of the critical... Normally we would have to test in VR and then go back to the editor and exactly. test in VR and go back yeah. to the editor. Take, put the head on, take the head off, put the head on. Yeah. Yeah. It really messes with your head, you know? And, and, and we saw this, like, during bullet train development, uh, Jerome and Nick and other guys who worked on the project constantly have to go into VR, make sure that they set yeah, the metrics are all correct on the objects and they look convincing. It's an interesting thing about VR games. It's not like photorealism isn't enough to no. make you feel immersed. It's not. Like it needs to have the right metrics that you would see in the real world. Otherwise, your you, your brain's just like this is not this is not real because things aren't the right size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 always the case. I've played so many VR experiences where that's the thing. It's like why am I so tiny? Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> I've, I've built them before. It's exactly the same thing. Um, well, one thing, Mike, you were talking about earlier as well was the fact that you know we have like the head tracking, the translational tracking. So, you know, Nick can actually walk around and look around something without having to move himself into space, right? Like, you know, if if you're if you're navigating in the traditional viewport with WASD and the, and the mouse, you can kind of go around something to make your edit and then move back this way. Whereas this is just like you just peek over and you grab the thing you yep. need, you know, and you, you yeah. make that adjustment right there on it's, the fly. It's quite interesting. Like, you can actually reach under something and select it. Like, yeah. you know, it doesn't even have to be in plain <laughs> sight. You can, you can, like, blind fire behind you and interact with things if you needed to. You grab something and throw it. It's <laughs> often easier to, to work with things, especially at your hand height, in kind of a model, train model scale. And then you scale yourself back up to the real and then you look. You know, that feels pretty good up there. I feel a little bit jammed in with just the visual prototype. But then I can pinch the zoom back down to my hand scale. That's kind of will make it. select these. 
and delete. And that makes it really ergonomic because uh, you know right now you're moving around a lot in the real world. You know this is almost room scale VR as you're currently doing it. But yeah. you could also sit down at your uh, oh absolutely in your chair mm -hmm. and uh, then be working on the level shrunk down as if it's a little architectural yeah. model. I mean you can move yeah. all the way across this environment by scaling it down. There's a little bit of flick of the wrist. Yep. And back to here. I'm seeing some questions come across the chat, so I want to go ahead and um, just confirm. Like, this is the editor. This is not an EXE that's bumped that's out of right. the editor. This is actual Unreal it's Engine running. Like, they hit the play button, and now exactly. they're inside. So the yeah. there's a new toolbar button on the editor toolbar that launches you into VMR, VR mode. It toggles instantly. You can go back and forth between 2D normal style editing and this seamlessly. It's just it's even faster than playing light. VR to go back uh, and forth. Right. The lights are probably my favorite thing in here, just pulling them out and placing them exactly details where panel. you want them to be. Here's the light. Here's the details panel. I can scrub that um, temperature value. And we're changing the color. Oh, yeah, temperature. From a warm light to a cool light. So we were surprised this was kind of a cool thing, right? Yeah. When we got the UIs in here, we were like, oh, is this going to work? I'm not sure. Um, and we'll have, we have some work to do to make it uh, even more useful. But surprisingly, like a lot of our editor UI, once we apply the DPI scaling to it, make, kind of big, make everything kind of uniformly bigger, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's usable. It's quite usable. You mm -hmm. can get, and you can get to, like, we want you to be able to get to everything. Oh yeah, and so one of the other things we, we uh, didn't talk about before is that instead of, you know, if you don't want to have to grab and slide the whole world around all the time, you can also just kind of point and teleport over. <laughs> yeah, it's bullet train, basically. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 it's link snap. Uh, so now we shot. have this <laughs> absolutely massive robot in front of me. So I can just kind of pinch and zoom him down so he's now a toy in front of me. I can grab his arms and rotate them. <clears throat> this and turn off rotation snap, just like that. Um, we can even select all of this stuff. You can kind of arbitrary rotate with two collections, two, uh, two grabs to your back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you don't want to work on a specific point, you can just grab however you'd like. Yeah. Like those guys. I, I think that's a big thing too, like, because you know, as a level designer, as you're, you're space barring through the different widgets and then like rotate this way a little bit, that way a little bit, this way a little bit, that way a little bit. This will actually let you take it, slide it right into the socket you want it to be in. Yeah. I think it's really simple. This guy. Rotating with, or basically it's simultaneous move. Trans or trans translate rotate scale yeah. freeform. But it's great because it's it's one it's one one the whole time. Like your hands stay exactly where you picked up the object yeah. on it. Um, and once you get the hang of it, it's just really fun for freeform uh, uh, transformation. We think it's gonna be great for animation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, it's gonna be really cool. Imagine posing a character like this. Can imagine this in a hierarchy, just set up a bit of an IK so you can grab the hand there and just yeah. you know, right now it's not set up that way. It's just, you know, using the and someone could probably even rotates. use this to like build multiple skeletals uh, and extend it to have uh, <laughs> like socket uh, like uh, right, yeah. snapping, right? Like so if you have a modular robot actually that you've built out as a multiple skeletal meshes that throw in animations, you could throw them in here and actually snap pieces together like a like a Lego yep, stuff. Just throw them together. Dancing robot. It's so much fun. Cool. Cool. So what else you got for us, Nick? You, 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 are you going to poke around the robot a little bit more? Oh, well, that's about it. All right, okay. great. Take a little break. So, Make a break. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Hey, we'll get you out of the headset. He's a, he's a simulation lightweight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, the audience knows for the most part there, but uh, yeah, that's that's great. Sorry, Nick. No uh, Tim, any closing thoughts? What, what, what do you what do you what do you see this going? What, what are the next steps you think for VR editing? In general. Well, you know, I think this is the start of a real revolution. Um, and over the next decade, every 3D tool um, and application is going to move into VR. Um, and they're going to be far more natural and intuitive to use like this. Um, after using this, uh, it's really a pain to go back to the mouse, even. Yeah. Now, uh, it, this isn't, you know, the final thing. Um, this is just the start of a journey. We have uh, some of the key pieces of the engine up and running now, and uh, we'll rapidly get other parts of it, uh, the editor, uh, implemented in VR over time. Um, and yeah, we're using this uh, to build stuff ourselves, so uh, you can expect it to evolve rapidly. But uh, just the, the feeling of it all is, is pretty wild. I actually have dreams about this. And uh, in these <laughs> dreams, it's not like me sitting at a computer doing something. I am in VR. I am in that world. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, when you actually take the headset off, it's kind of disappointing actually to be back in the real world where uh, you can't manipulate things all that easily. Yeah. So uh, it's a it's going to be a very exciting time for VR, and every generation as the hardware improves, this is going to get dramatically better to the point where uh, yeah, this is uh, this is going to be the future way of building everything. Yeah, one thing that's undeniable is when you're in VR and you're you're being creative in VR, it's like where where where's a better creative space 
yeah. being immersed inside the world that you're creating or sitting at a desk in front of a mouse and keyboard, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. clicking, clicking, clicking. And clicking. at the same time, <laughs> but even, you even say that, not just the environment, but the capabilities that the technology allows us to do. I mean, like, you can, the possibilities are endless, right? Yep. Like, I mean, as things grow out, you can, the creativity just goes wide forever. Oh, gosh, yeah, there's a, I think so many ideas, there's so many things. <laughs> yeah. Just wait, it's oh, gonna yeah, be yeah. awesome. And, and like, this is kind of one of the cool, like, we're really excited about getting it out there so that you guys can try stuff out too. We're gonna build this so it's extensible and yeah. VR is still really early and especially motion controls and all the in possible interactions. Like, we can't wait to see, like, like we, have, we think we have a few cool ideas here, but like, people are gonna come up with such amazing stuff with this. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be awesome. It's insane. I mean, and it's kind of a funny irony um, that up till now, we've been actually building VR content sitting in front of a mouse, keyboard, and monitor. Um, you know, having used this now, it feels like you know Henry Ford uh, riding his horse to work uh, to design a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, yeah, same way we've always done everything with the Unreal Engine. You know, we, we plan on releasing this thing yep. that just as is. You know, source code, source code available, yeah, yeah. Um, updates available moving forward as the VR uh, landscape evolves over, you know, the next infinity, you know, it'll be one of those things that, that helps, helps us drive, uh, help us drive with this tool so the community